Luke chapter 7. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant, pay attention to centurions, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. And Matthew 8 says, Palsy. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. So this Gentile gets Jews to go get Jesus. And there's not any Jews. He gets the elders. He's, he's going to make sure this business is done right. He ain't going to trust the youngers. And he knows something about Jesus is hanging around with the Jewish people. So he's not going to come to him. He's going to send his own people. And when they came to Jesus, this would be the elders, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. He, the centurion, the Jews have given this Gentile a good report to Jesus. Now, that says much about the centurion. Because Jews hate Gentiles. Go ask Peter and Jonah. I say that all the time because that's the two perfect examples. For he loved our nation, Israel. Now there is a thing that, that opened the eyes of God. I will bless them that bless thee and has built us a synagogue. So this centurion is going to get the blessing of God because he's blessing God's people. And the centurion didn't say that, did he? No. He just said, hey, listen, I, I got this guy. He's sick. He's going to die. You go get him. And these guys spoke up to Jesus. And then Jesus went with them. And it was now not far from the house. The centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof. Well, this guy's humble. I don't need you here. And I'm not saying that out of dis disrespect. You're much too important to come in my house. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. I'm just a Gentile, dead dog, according to you guys. So I sent your people. Now watch this. But say in a word, and my, save, my servant shall be healed. Look at the faith. Just say the word. That's exactly what happened in Genesis 1. Thus saith the Lord. Let there be. These centurions are excellent Bible people. For I am also am a man set under authority. I have somebody over me. Having under me soldiers. I got soldiers under me. I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. He has no rebellious servants. But oh, God does, doesn't He? God tells me to go, and I don't. God tells me come, I don't. God says do it, and I don't. This guy who's unsaved puts me to shame. I'm going to be honest with you. I want you to know who you're listening to. You're listening to a sinner. When Jesus heard these things, and this is not the guy speaking, this is the elders of the Jews, this is his friends. When Jesus heard these, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that follow him, the Jews, these would be Jews. Follow. Jesus does a, a 180, turns to the people. I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Ouch! This dog just put didn't we just back here a couple chapters ago, we, didn't we just mention that the, the woman that, that was a Gentile that got 
got help from God, and then Naaman, who was cured of leprosy, a Gentile, he turns to his people and says, you know what? That Gentile is better than you guys are. You guys are following me for signs, healings, and food. This guy just, just believed the word. And they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sent. See, the centurion never even came. They turned around and given God the glory. It came to pass the day after. He went to a city called Nain, Nain, which is in Galilee. And many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now, when he came nigh to the gate of the city, every city had gates and walls. So building a, building a wall around America would be biblical. Behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. She was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. So here's a woman. Not only did she lost her husband at one time. Now her only son has died. And when the Lord saw her. He had compassion on her. And said unto her. Weep not. You're at a funeral. They're going down the street. Imagine if I were to do that. We got a graveyard. I stop all the traffic in the middle. Of, that's what Jesus did, didn't he? Huh? Stop that crying, will you? But I ain't got that power. I don't have that power over death. I am not the hope. Jesus Christ is the hope. Even Thessalonians tells us, listen, you know, we are the weak for our lost, one, our lost ones. We're not the weak for those that have died in the Lord. They've got hope. They're absent from the body and present with the Lord. We shed tears because we miss them, but not because of their state. Their state, listen. Anybody who I know has died in the Lord, man, they're much better than I am, and I envy them. I like to change their place. And it's funny how he tells her, weep not, and yet John eleven thirty five, 35, the shortest verse in the Bible. And Jesus wept, and it was at a funeral. And he came and touched the beer. There's, there's a good word for beer. Casket. Dead body. Put, put that on a, on a can of beer. And they that bear him stood still. He stopped the funeral procession. And he said, young man, you got to admit, I mean, it, it, wouldn't you think Jesus to be a little oddball here? He tells the mother, hush. He stops the procession. And then he speaks to the dead body and says, arise. And it's impossible. impossible for me to walk up to a dead body and say arise and he that was dead confirmed by who doctor. a medical doctor sat up and began to speak and he delivered the man to his mother Ooh, that was a happy day but he's going to die again Everyone who was resurrected in the Bible will die again. And there came a fear in all, and they glorified God, saying, Now see, Jews require a sign. They just saw a dead man get up and speak and went to his mother. That's a sign for Jews. That a great prophet is risen up among them. He's better than a great prophet. That God visited his people. Luke 1.68 Emmanuel, God is with us. So, by saying that, they knew exactly the story of Jesus in his birth and the name. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea 
and throughout all the region roundabout. So it sounds like the story got changed to the telephone game. And the disciples of John showed him all these things. And John calling unto him two of his two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? John's getting word in prison. John's in prison. If this is really the guy, how come I'm sitting in here? Where's the kingdom? Why are we still under Roman persecution? I just don't understand that verse, though, because he was the one that said, Behold the land and take away the sin of the world. He baptized him and saw the Holy Spirit descend on him. Yeah, but trials and tribulations brings us down. He's, he's sitting rotten in jail. He gets that. It just shows that John is human. And he got a little discouraged. And Jesus never badmouths him over it. He just he tells we're gonna say go tell go tell John what you saw, what you see, pat him on the back, give him a little love. And when the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist, who dropped his middle name, the has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Now remember, John's in prison, he hasn't seen Jesus. And remember Jesus said there'll be other ones coming in my name. So John wants to make sure that this ain't a deceiver. Probably want to make sure that this ain't the Antichrist. In the same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answered and said to them, go your way. Tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor, to the poor the gospels preach. And blessed is he, happy is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Go, go, go relieve John, go help him out. John, don't get offended. How's that for words? You take that prison cell in good strife. Don't become offensive. Offended. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously appealed and live de delicately are in king's courts. So John the Baptist wasn't a king. He was of the priests. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. Well, we just read over here, it said, verse 16, a great prophet is risen among us. Why, Jesus' own words, Jesus is not a great prophet because he raised John the Baptist up as a great prophet. And we know John and Jesus are not the same. That th This is he of whom it is written. Malachi 3.1 Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before it. Jesus says, listen, John the Baptist... It's confirmed of the scriptures. Jesus died according to the scriptures, was buried, and arose again according to the scriptures. John fulfilled the scriptures. And I say unto you, among those that are born of women, plural, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. How's that? But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. You mean maybe that's the turning to just very humble to say, you know what, Jesus, you're not even worthy to come to my house if that guy would get right. I, I, I assure that this centurion way he lived, I guarantee he would go out and tell people what Jesus done for him and what will happen. I'm a prophet. When I tell you you don't believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to hell. I'm a prophet. As we've been doing from, from Genesis to Luke chapter 7, I've mentioned prophecies of the Bible. I'm a prophet. And, 
Anybody who gives the gospel. You're telling them what their future is. It's not like going to a palm reader. I got the sure word of God. And it's Jesus has fulfilled the first advent prophecies 100%. And there are more prophecies yet to come. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of God. Oh, look at that. The sinners, the bad people, visited John for baptism. Well, so did Paul. So did the apostles. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God. Look at that statement. Jesus just said, Behold, I send my messenger before thy faith. That is fulfilled in scriptures. And right after it says that the Pharisees have rejected the counsel of God. What God said against himself being not baptized of him John well we know one Pharisee that was and maybe Nicodemus and maybe John of Armida but I'm not going to go far as to say but we know Paul was at least and the Lord said whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation and to what are they like I'm, what's an illustration of these people they are like the children sitting in a marketplace, calling one to another, and saying, We have piped unto you, we made music, and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you, and ye have not wept. Matthew 11 says, Lamented. <coughs> For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. He had, he had locusts for his dinner and honey. And you say he has a devil. Ooh. Not nice to say about John. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking. He sat down at the publican's tables and ate. He's going to sit down and Mary's going to come in and take the oil bore over his head. And you say, behold, a gluttonous. That's a excessive eating. Jesus, that would be a violation of the law. And a wine bibbler, great drinking, that would also violate the law. So they're lying about Jesus, and they're lying about John the Baptist. A friend of publicans, yes, that's true. And sinners, very true. So look, at they're taking Satan's thing. Three quarters of the message is a lie, but one part of it is the truth. Just like Satan. But wisdom is justified of all her children. What's that statement say? They are like children sitting in the marketplace. You guys are no wisdom because you're not the children of wisdom. You don't show what wisdom has. You don't even know who John the Baptist is. He just told him. And you don't even know who I am. So you're not wise. And the scriptures put, foretell who we are in Christ and who John the Baptist is. And we know, so we have the wisdom of God. He just called them dummies. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Look at that. Okay, I'll come and eat. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, ooh, for all have sinned, comes short of the glory of God. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought in an alabaster box of ointment. Now, this is not the same as Matthew 26 and Mark 14. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping. And began to wash his feet with tears, and then wiped them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet before they had holes. This woman got to see the feet of Jesus before they were marred for my sins. I'm never going to see Jesus like this. I'm going to see the holy whole Jesus. Because of my sins. And anointed them with anointment. And when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it. 
he spake within himself. Oh, you know, didn't say out loud. This man, if he were a prophet, if he were a prophet, how much does he believe in Jesus? At least the people over here say we got a great prophet. Uh, verse number 16. So why did he invite him into his house? Status. I had Jesus slept here. Yeah. If this, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him. Ew. For she is a sinner. You see how high and mighty these guys are. This woman truly loves Jesus, and this guy is like, ew. He's almost treating her like she's got leprosy. Keep away. If you got a disease, keep away. Jesus answering said, answered what? <laughs> His thoughts. Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure, Master. There was a certain creditor which had two debt, debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. All right, one 500 and one 50. When they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. No more debt. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? Simon Hansen said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave the most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. You just sunk yourself, buddy. That woman who is a sinner loves me more than you that are high and mighty. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Ooh, Seest thou this woman? Look at her. Look at this woman, man. Who do you think you are? Would you like me to name your sins? How would you like me to call the roll down like it's going to be called at the, at the Great White Throne Judgment? Look at her. <laughs> I enter into thy house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. Now, that's a violation of the law, too. Oh. For she has washed my feet with her tears, with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss. Well, that's not really in the law. But this woman, since the, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. I can imagine she's still kissing. Because he said she's not stopped. My head with oil thou didst not anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with anointment. Wherefore I say unto thee. Watch this. Her sins. I'm going to say unto you, but I'm going to talk about her. You want to talk about her? I'll talk about her. Ready? Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little and he said unto her now he turns to her thy sins are forgiven and they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves who is this that forgiveth sins also and he completely ignores him and said unto the woman thy faith has saved thee go in peace everybody at the dinner go to hell I don't want to be so frank about it but that's what God's going to do Don't ever think that you're so bad that God can't save you. And don't you dare think you're so high and mighty that God has to save you. We never hear of Simon anymore or any of these people at this table. But we don't hear about this woman. But what Jesus said to this woman, <coughs> we will hear from her again. And she's one of those people too that are unnamed. 